Shabbat Shalom, glory to the Most High, Yah. Man, we're back at it for another Sabbath day teaching. I told you guys last Sabbath day, you know, for 2023, we're taking it to the next level. Closer to God Ministries uh, is going to go into territories that a lot of religious leaders, you know, pastors, teachers won't go into, but it's the areas that people need to hear. And when you think about the scriptures, everything in scriptures, it's all teachable material. There's a scripture for that. But some people don't like talking about this stuff because they don't want to be putting those crosshairs of controversial topics that are keeping people in bondage. This is where I'm going to be a little bit different. Um, and scriptures talk about being bold as a lion. And today, you know, the overall goal is to set somebody free, lead you into a path of righteousness when it comes into relationships. And the premise is, you know, every New Year's, you know, there's people that have these relationship uh, New Year's resolutions. And you be like, relationship goals for 2021, 2022, 2023, it briefs well, but you ain't acting on none of it. And chances are, you know, we need to, you, the chances are you might have to do, or like all of us at some point are gonna have to do some, some deep down, uh, deep sea soul searching. And we're gonna have to work out the issues of them heart issues of the heart and allow the most high y'all to heal us and give us wisdom in these areas. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Closer to God Ministries, where we push forward in the kingdom of the Most High Yah. Closer to God Ministries is for those who really want to learn true submission, true obedience, reverence, and a fear of the Most High Yah. One thing about Closer to God Ministries is I'm not afraid to push the envelope. There's a lot of things that go on in the world that need to be addressed, but religious leaders won't talk about it. Closer to God Ministries, I'm pushing forward. Each man must be convinced in his own mind. I'm going to give you the disclaimer. This is not for everyone everybody. If you're somebody that has a soft spirit, a sensitive spirit, you don't like that hard truth that can set you free, this is not for you. But if you choose to stay tuned, don't just run off on the plug with my content. Hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, turn your notifications on so you can see when I'm posting new content. And then if you really want to support the channel, check out the doggone link in the description for some exclusive discount codes. Roll that beautiful bean footage. I want to give you a disclaimer. Because, man, I had a, <clears throat> I've came across one pastor in my 33 years of living that went hard for the kingdom, did not hold back, no topics. And he often said, and I, you know, I want to shout this out. He often would say, you know, the church doors remain open. He would always say this because he wasn't in the business of tickling people ears. So he was letting you know that. If some point your spirit, the wrong spirit in you gets flustered up about the word of God, which I'm giving you today, don't think nobody's holding you hostage. And this is why I say close to the God ministries, we hit a little different, hit a little different. You know, don't think that you are held captive to this message when I'm giving this to you trying to help somebody out because I see a lot, I see a lot of of threads that people post. I see a lot of stories. A lot of you have these relationship goals, but let's see if we can give you some fundamental wisdom that can help you not be in the same predicament of not having that prospering relationship, you know, next year. I'm gonna give you some stuff. Chances are you may not be ready to hear it, what I want you to do is I want you to take a, a, a notepad and a pen out and study these scriptures. And let me keep you in mind, before men start to cheer and say, yeah, this is what we've been waiting to hear. Before women start to cheer and say, yeah, this is what we've been waiting to hear. I've been waiting on this. You might want to hold to the end because this, this, this teaching right here, this Sabbath day teaching right here is like, is like learning Mike Tyson peekaboo style, 
one minute you see them, next minute you don't, and you catch it, 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 it's coming from every direction. But it's all in righteousness, it's all in holiness, and I'm going to give you everything coming from Bible. Today in this message, we're going to break down religious barriers. I don't, if you believe in the Most High, yeah, if you believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you struggle in relationships, this is going to be for you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you, what, what denomination you come from. I don't care, you know, what sect you come from, what religion you come from. If you struggle in relationships, this is for you. 2023, hey, we, Closer to God Ministries is turning up. Okay, so I gave you that disclaimer. The doors are open. Don't think anybody's holding you hostage. You tuned in to me. I didn't tune in to you. For people tuning in, I thank you. What's going on, Z? Hey, hey, hey thank you for tuning in. Okay, we're going to start this thing off with John chapter 14, verse 15. Write these scriptures down because I have to start off with this because if I say anything and your spirit is like, oh, I don't want to hear that. Oh, I'm not ready to hear that. I want to ask you something. If you somebody that claims to love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, if you somebody that claims to love Yahshua HaMashiach, one and the same, okay? You know, John chapter 14 is the, is, the, is the baseline for where we need to start. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So the reason I start off with that is because I'm probably going to say something that your spirit does is not ready to hear. I'm going to reach down and touch some of that stuff in your heart that you haven't been wanting to address. But this message is coming from Bible. Okay. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 14. This is why out of some of this stuff, uh, uh, talking about relationships, talking about biblical marriage, you might not be willing to accept. I'm going to say some things your spirit, your heart may have some stone in it and you're going to reject it. This scripture is for you. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are not spiritually discerned. I'm hoping to those people who have relationship with the most high Yah and you are learning the word of God so your discernment can be increased. I want to tell you that I know there's some people that might watch this and they're going to reject all of it. They're going to hear what they want and run with it. But all of it, if you're going, if you're going to eat one thing off the plate, eat everything because it's all teachable material. It's all the inspired word of God. Okay. If you're somebody who has these relationship, that was a uh, first Corinthians chapter two, verse 14. I got you when Walker, I got you. And that says the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. So this right here is very important that you are born again. The old you is gone and the new you, you can receive this when you have the spirit of God. Moving on, Hebrews 13, four. For anybody that has these relationship goals and you like, this is my year, this is my season. This is the year that I'm gonna have a wife. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this thing right. You know, this is the year that I'm gonna have a husband. God has somebody for me. I'm not, I'm not here to give you no prophetic word that ain't biblical. You see what I'm saying? I'm not here to tell you God told me this. God, told, I'm not here to tickle your ears. I'm going to give you what the book says. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Hey, everybody is not going to be married. Everybody's not going to succeed in marriage, be, marriage because Oftentimes we get into it for our own will, but let me say this, when is your will going to be at a higher priority and ever be, you know, more valuable than the will of the most high Yah? I'll wait for it because it's not, it's not. It's telling us, 
you know, marriage is honorable. Man, we're supposed to hold this in high esteem, high regards. But when you play with it like the world does, like I once did, you know, you get into it not knowing what your responsibilities are, what your role is, and you think, okay, just because I saw this person do it, I saw that person do it, I'm going to take a little bit of that, I'm going to take a little bit of this, I'm going to come up with my own recipe, and now you wonder why you're struggling. Now you're tuned in to me watching this, and you're like, man, this hits hard. I told you the truth hits hard. So you have to, you know, when you think about biblical marriage, I want you to realize that the world has tried to define marriage outside of what the Bible says. When you do that, you catch all that smoke for everything that comes along with that. All them consequences, you come along with it. When we start trying to cook up new concoctions and think that we're going to be blessed in abundance and have righteous prosperity, that's, a, that's, that's short lived. When you get back to the basics, you know, and start realizing that once you submit fully to the most high Yah and just apply with what he says and obey with what he says, you're going to be like, oh man, this, okay, I can quit doing all of this stuff and quit doing all this extracurricular stuff and just get to the basics. Marriage is for the righteous. I'm here to tell you today that the first time I got married, I didn't know none of, I didn't know none of this. None of this. I didn't have nobody, not a grandmama, not a, not a, not a daddy, not a mama, not a grandfather, not an uncle, not a pastor, not a nada that was giving me this right here, preparing for relationship success. So today I'm going I'm to I'm I'm plant a seed in you. Either that seed is going to, you know, be watered by the most high Yah, or either I'm throwing a seed and trying to plant a seed in a heart of stone and it's not going to grow. I can't do nothing about that. I give you the word, I walk away. If you take it and, 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 and eat it and pray on it, you can be all right. Most high y'all gonna help you out. But everybody is not gonna get a, a, a prospering marriage, not gonna get a God-fearing man, a God-fearing woman. Everybody ain't gonna get it. When you think about it, you're not gonna get it because of your lack of obedience. Your lack of obedience. You might try to, concoct it the way you want in your will, but it's going to be short-lived. You're going to end up getting into a relationship that the Most High Yah has not blessed or not brought you two together, and you're going to end up getting out of a relationship, praying to the Most High Yah, yeah, help me. How come, how come you, you know, I got to go through this? You didn't never, you didn't ask God in the beginning to pair you up with this person, but out of our own lust, out of our own desires, we get into some stuff that we don't know nothing about. Marriage is serious business. Marriage is a beautiful thing, but you can't play with it. When you play with it, you're going to get yourself into some trouble. You're going to get yourself into some trouble. Okay, let's keep going. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7 through 12. Make sure you write these down and you might have to go back and read some of these. I'm, I'm trying to break it down, but I don't want to take too much of your time because we got a lot to cover. Honestly, when it comes to marriage, you know, you can, at the statistics that are plaguing this society today, you know, I'm here to tell you that men, modern men don't have the patience to deal with the modern women. When we look at divorce rates, 70% of divorces are filed by women, 90% if they're educated. When you think about that, you have to be built for the most high Yah. You have to be kingdom built in order to combat those statistics. Because if you don't know what to do as a man, when the woman is saying, you know what, I'm through with this. If you don't know how to pray and ask for the most high Yah to move on her heart, you're going to be part of that statistics. Today, all my sisters out here, you know, if you don't apply these principles right here, you're going to make those numbers that I just gave you go even higher. And I don't want that. I don't want that because that leads to a, a, a the next generation being broken again, being, you know, raised out of balance. And we're going to get into that. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse seven through 12 for man 
ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of God. But woman is the glory of man. Understand me. For man was not made from the woman, but woman from man. Don't shoot the messenger. This is the word of God. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. This is why a wife ought to have a symbol of authority over her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor man of woman. For woman was made for man, so man is now born of woman. And all things are from God. Man, I'm here to tell you, do not listen to these men and these women who tell you, you know what? You don't need no man because they going to keep you single. You don't need no man. You don't need no woman. You got the MGTOW community. These is brothers who don't want nothing to do with a woman. You got the, 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 the modern feminist. They don't want nothing to do with a man. Leave these people alone if you want to prosper in a relationship in 2023 because you can't be out here independent and, and moving in that independent energy and thinking the Most High Yah is going to bless you with something that you don't even agree with. Let's keep going. I told you that the, the, the truth hits hard, but the truth will set you free. Ecclesiastics 4 verses 1 through 9. For everybody that you say, well, I'm independent. This is my season. This is that. You're listening to these false prophetic words that ain't biblical. Hey, I'm here to tell you. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 give, give you Bible. Ecclesiastics 4 chapter 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two withstand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Let me let me peel that backwards for you. That threefold co coil cord is a biblical marriage or a relationship that's formed with the glue of the Most High Yah. See, when you got two, you already strong. You can stand against one. But when you have, you know, the Most High Yah at the forefront of your marriage, at the forefront of your relationship, that ain't quickly broken. Good luck with that. But if you alone out here, independent as a man or a woman, Chances are you're going to get yourself into some trouble when it comes to sexual immorality. And I'm going to hit that a little bit later on. So uh, if you somebody out here that you constantly in bed alone and you like, man, this sucks. You know, I wish I had somebody. I'm going to give you some stuff that you can you can pray to the most high y'all about. Ask him to fix what's in you. That's not right. So you can prosper like this. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse four through seven. Now, just because somebody in it is just because somebody says they love you, they might be giving you lip service because the most high Yah is love. When it comes to how we're supposed to love one another as men and as women, as husband and wife, he gives us the instruction of what that love looks like for a man loving his wife and a wife loving his husband. I'm going to give you something. This is the first. Wow. wow this is that peekaboo style. Chances are you don't even realize that in scripture, the most high Yah tells a man to love his wife. But you're going to you're going to I get I t anybody take me up on this challenge. I want you to use that King James version of the Bible. You can use the King James version of the 1611 or anything but prior to that. I want you to find me a scripture in there where it tells wives specifically to love their husband. But what you will find out is it tells wives or women to honor, to reverence their husband. But it tells husbands to love their wives. Why is this important? Because 
In the beginning, I told you, if you're listening to these people that's telling you everything that's not biblical and how to proceed in a relationship and you consistently failing, you might want to listen to your boy. See, a man does not want love in the form that he gives to a woman or the way that the Bible prescribes a man to love a woman. The Bible prescribes a woman to honor and to reverence her husband. That's a big difference. If you try to love on a man like a man loves on you, I guarantee you, you're going to have some problems as a, as a woman, as a wife. Men, if you try to just honor your wife and not love on her the way that the Most High Yah tells you to do in Scripture, you're going to have some problems. Chances are she's not going to respect you because you might end up being one of these, uh, let's see, Ahab type brothers. When we talk about Ahab, Ahab was the husband of Jezebel. He worshiped his wife. He honored his wife. He did not love her the way that the Most High Yah said that he was supposed to love a wife. And this is outlined all in scriptures. He was easily manipulated. He was weak. He didn't have a backbone. He couldn't stand up to the doggone tribulations of biblical marriage. He just wasn't built for it. We have a lot of brothers out here that aren't built for it. Chances are you don't have a reference to, to, you know, you didn't come from a reference of a father, of a mother that was teaching you stuff like this. So what happens? You consistently fail as a man or a woman. Okay, here we go. Hey, and uh, Wynn Walker, it says, I don't know why people love the church, but don't follow the Bible. Too many opinions and not scriptures. In my experience, Hatred because, let me click this. This, this. Let me see what she's saying. Because I choose to follow his word and the commandments. That's very true. Let me explain this to you. There are spirits out here that's highly religious. This is why I said my message, it breaks down religious barriers. Denominational barriers, it breaks it down. You know, there's these highly religious spirits that lack obedience. And when you have that highly religious spirit that lacks obedience, lacks submission, you're going to continue to stumble. You're going to continue to fall. And this is where I said, everybody is spiritual until that thing gets biblical. Wow, wow. That's the truth. Let's keep going. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse four through seven. Don't be out here giving nobody this lip service, talking about you love them when you really don't want to action that, when you ain't 10 toes down about that love. Because I'm going to tell you, my first marriage, I messed that up. And when I got back to this, this doggone Bible right here and submitted my life to the Most High Yah, your boy started winning. Marriage is truly a beautiful thing. All of them stony issues of the heart, Most High Yah took care of that. He took care of it. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Hey, let me tell you something. Relationships are like a waveform, okay? And that faith, that faith helps you when you at the low point of that waveform. Chances are when everything is going good in your life, if you don't really have a relationship with God, you're not giving him the glory when things is going right. Come on, let's be real. That faith that you should be exercising on a daily basis is for them low points. So when you hit them low points and you like, man, this, this man is crazy. This woman is crazy. I'm ready to leave. That's when faith is going to get you through that. Let's keep, let's keep pushing forward for the kingdom. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 33. Now here, here's the, here's the thing. Now I'm about to get into some stuff that I know people don't want to hear. I know it. I know it, but it's Bible. It's Bible. You don't doggone shoot the mailman when he deliver a, a, a bill to your house. You just went out there and checked it and got the message. Message. Here we go. Ephesians chapter five, verse 22 to 33. Wives submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Let me tell you something for my sisters out here. If you're not submitted to the Lord, I'm talking about 10 toes down for the Lord. Chances are you see that word submission as a curse word. Something in your spirit gets you like, oh, I ain't doing all that. 
but it's here to yeah, don't even don't even worry about submitting to a man or trying to do that or making it look like you submitted to a man if you not submitted to the Lord. Why submit to your own husbands as to the Lord? Check this out. I'm going to give you some closer to God ministries cuts different. I can guarantee you, you can Google 10 churches and they not, they not going in like this. They going to tickle your ears with all this other stuff. But for the goals that people have, this is the message people need to hear. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and himself, its savior. Now is the church submit to Christ. So also wives should submit in everything to their husband. It didn't say in some things. It didn't say in what you want. It didn't say in what you feel like. It says in everything. I told you. I told you, hey, the, the, the doors is open. The doors is open. And men, let me, men, before you, before you be like, yeah, this is what we need to hear. Hey, hold up, pump your brakes. I told you this is Mike Tyson peekaboo style. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Here's where, where I say it. You, you, you're not gonna find. The scriptures talking about wives specifically loving husbands. It's going to say wives honor, wives reverence, wives respect, but it's going to say husbands love. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might represent present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and two shall become one flesh. The mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Y'all thought I was making this up. Y'all thought I was making this up. Let me tell you something, men. See, if you are trying to get into a relationship because you have an uncontrollable lust, or you think you getting into a relationship because you just want to do all this freaking kinky stuff and you just doggone want a porn star. You getting into it for the wrong reasons. You getting into it for the wrong reasons. I'll get into them conjugal rights, but that ain't everything. Because when we think about marriage, biblical marriage, this thing is about honor. This thing is about duty. This thing is about legacy. And then if you playing around with it, you're going to catch all that smoke that comes with them consequences. Think about this. This is why I say the modern man might not be ready for doggone marriage. You can run down there and go get a piece of paperwork that says by the powers vested in whatever state you're from, but ain't no power of the Ruach HaShadesh in it. Ain't no anointing from the Holy Spirit in it. And this is when you find out you didn't got yourself into trouble. Hey, make sure you share this with somebody because I'm going to go in on this one. Men, every time you open up your mouth and say you love a woman, make sure, make sure if you if you claim to have a relationship with the Most High Yah, and it says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Don't be out here lying. Don't be out here giving that lip service. Out here, play pimping. You ain't, you ain't built like that. You ain't built for that, and it's okay because the Most High Yah can help you. This thing says, Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. How many, I'm telling you, the first time I got married, my love wasn't like that. My love wasn't like that. And once I started reading this and, and, and truly got a relationship with the Most High Yah, I said, man, boy, this some, this some real stuff. So when things, and that waveform gets a little low, this is where this comes in. You got to love them through that. Chances are you don't have enough patience. You might want to volunteer to coach some little kids. You might want to volunteer in customer service. You might want to pray to the most high y'all to, to strengthen you in that area of patience because chances are you may not have it. That's what I had to do. All right. First Peter chapter three, verse seven. 
Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel since they are heirs with you of the grace of life so that your prayers may not be hindered. You have to live with your wife in an understanding way. You let the wrong teacher give this message, they gonna take that word weaker and try to make it seem like it's weak. No, it don't mean weak. It means weaker, lesser than when it comes to strength. Because of this, the Most High Yah is telling you to live with them in an understanding way. If you miss out on that, you will end up getting a lot of this wrong where you should have patience, where you should have understanding. There's a lot of men that simply, if they could have had this right here, it would have saved men from a divorce. It could have saved a family. It could have saved a relationship. It could have kept a household together and children being brought up with balance. Men, this is on you. Just like when I read scriptures like, uh, you know, Christ is the head of man, man is the head of woman, but you, you can't be moving in that authority if you're not submitted to the most high Yah yourself. You're going to tear the union of the family up. You have to live with your wives in an understanding way. And I'm going to keep getting into this. I told you, just when you thought about cheering, hey, you might want to pump your brakes because I'm, I'm, there's something in here for everybody. First Peter chapter four, verse eight. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sin. Man, it was the love of the Most High Yah that caused him to give his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, you know, to die on the cross for our sins. And when you read the scripture and you look at the order of things and talking about how much a man is supposed to love his wife, Man, you willing, to, you willing to get crucified behind the doggone love of your woman, of your wife? Hey, you, you, you might want to go to the Most High, y'all, because that, that takes some character. It takes a relationship with the Most High, y'all. It's saying that love covers a multitude of sin. Here's one thing that I want to I wanna go ahead and interject, because everybody, you know, that has a relationship with the Most High, y'all, they always ask for forgiveness, which you should be doing, of your sins, but a very profound scripture is the most high Yah is not going to, you know, forgive you of your sins if you don't forgive others of their trespasses. A lot of you are holding on to bitterness. A lot of you, you, you bitter towards your mama. You're bitter towards your dad. You got some unresolved issues from a stony heart and you reject truth. You see what I'm saying? And there ain't no business and you enter it into biblical marriage because this thing is for royalty. It truly is about duty, honor, you know, perseverance, long suffering, you know, righteous prosperity. But if you can't forgive and you don't, you don't know the importance of forgiveness in a relationship on a daily basis, you're going to go to, you're going to go to bed a lot of nights mad. You're going to go to bed mad. And the scripture says, be angry, do not sin. It's okay for you to be angry at your wife, at your husband, but do not sin. There you go. Okay, next we're moving into the spirit that men and women that are looking for relationships, looking for marriage, because here's the thing. I don't deal with nobody talking about side pieces, about sneak leaks. Uh, what's, 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 what's the next, uh, August Alcina and Jada Pinkett. Um, uh, I don't deal in that realm of entanglements. Don't come over here with that. Come with something real. This is the spirit of a woman, of a wife and the spirit of a husband, a man. Chances are, if you don't have this spirit, you're going to struggle in relationships as a man. If you don't have no doggone backbone, let me say that again. If you don't have no backbone, you're going to be out here getting manipulated like Ahab. That's the truth. As a woman, if you don't have this spirit, but yet you're out here seeking these relationships, hoping that a man is going to commit himself to you, you're going to keep getting overlooked. And let me tell you, let me be honest. Let me be honest because I see these thirst traps on social media. Just because you got these men on your social media that give you attention these is not men with backbone. These is not men that's going to commit to you. 
These is men with lustful desires. And what do they want to do? They're fulfilling their lustful desires by giving you all of this attention. And out of the blue, you think you got options. But when it comes down to the selection, unless you're one of these women that's willing to, in open form in public, get on bending knee and propose to a man, don't come over here with that. Closer to God Ministries, don't, hey, girl, we can keep the Bible over here. Okay. Titus chapter two, verses three through five. Here's the thing. Man, I wish, you know, I grew up with a lot of family that was in church. You know, here's the thing. And I said, you know, a lot of people have that religious spirit, but they don't obey what the word says. And think about if you would have had a mama or a daddy that, that as a child, as a teenager, they was giving you this in bits and pieces, helping you navigate that thing. But oftentimes, you know, we, we, we didn't have parents that gave us this. So therefore, I'm here to tell you, you need to honor your mother and father. But oftentimes the reason you might struggle in relationships is because your, your mother and father were disobedient to the word of God. They might been in church clapping, hallelujah, amen, on, on, on Sunday for an hour and a half, eating the chicken, eating the food, all that stuff. But when it came down to application and obedience, they simply weren't built like that. So you're going to have to get this for yourself. Titus chapter two, verse three through five. Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to too much wine. Man, if you out here, you know, getting drunk as a wife, chances are, let me say something. This is, we in that generation of these men out here getting me too. Oftentimes, nobody talks about it comes from, it comes from doggone drinking too much. You can't even uh, discern what's going on as a woman. Next thing you know, you didn't done, done some stuff that you know you ain't had no business doing if you married her in a relationship. And here's the thing. You like, hey, hey, hey I got I got touched. That this happened to me. Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slave to too much wine. Man, as a woman, if the minute you start going through something and your first instinct is to say, man, I need a drink. I'm here to tell you, hey, you need to pray to the most high y'all because your first instinct should be asking for strength for the most high y'all to help you through that dip in the waveform. Alcohol ain't going to get it. They are to teach what is good and so train the young women to love their husbands and children to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husband that the word of God may not be revealed. You wonder why these divorce statistics are what they are. See, as a, as a woman, I told you, you need to honor your parents, but you need to realize the truth that they weren't living in. If you had a mama that struggled in relationships as a woman, chances are you're cut from that same cloth. And until you submit to this right here and start asking for the most high yada to, 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 to get you where you need to be, you're going to continue to struggle. And if you're going back to that same mama who struggled herself in relationships, thinking she has the advice and thinking that it's going to be greater than this word of the most high y'all. Good luck with that. Same thing goes for men. When I get into them, them spirits of a husband. Okay. They are to teach what is good. What is good? Good is the word of the most high y'all. A lot of mothers make the mistake of teaching their daughters the things of the world. Girl, you need to be independent. You need to go get this education. Why do you think the divorce rate jumps from 70 to 90% if the women are educated? Think about that. Divorces, 70% filed by women, 90% if they're educated. You are to teach what is good and so train the young woman to love their husband and children to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands and the word of God. Let me give you this. Oftentimes when people think about Proverbs 31, I want to tell you that everybody will give that lip service like their Proverbs 31. A lot of the, 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 the average woman, you read Proverbs 31, they're going to raise their hand and say, I'm a Proverbs 31. But this is what I want you to do, because many of you have never read Proverbs 5. Sisters out here, one of the best things that I can I can give you if you are struggling in relationships, you need to read Proverbs 5. You need to pray before you read it, because here's the thing. You going to have a significant emotional event. If you read Proverbs 5 
And then you realize and acknowledge that you are a Proverbs 5 type woman instead of a 31. This is when the reality is going to set in. Go back and read Proverbs 5 and see what it says. I'm not here to call you either one. The most high y'all knows. And if you fit that description of a Proverbs 5, this is why you can't get a man to commit to you. Because even a fool can have the basic level of worldly wisdom to know that he needs to stay away from you. Let me keep going. First Timothy chapter two, verse 12. I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. Now, I know what you're saying. You're thinking in this society, this Western society that we live in, your mind automatically goes to equality. But when we look at these roles in the Bible, man, let me tell you something. This thing is a, for all of my women out here, and men that believe in equality, I want you to go back and read. I'm going to give you some homework in this. I want you to go read Numbers 30. Read Numbers 30 if you believe in equality. Because men in the Bible are charged to protect daughters until marriage and then the husband, which is a man, takes them to the grave. And when you think about equality, you like, oh, equality. That works in the workplace. But when it comes to biblical marriage, don't bring that mess over here. Because when you start mixing these roles, you're going to get yourself into some trouble. So this is where I want to say something. If you grew up with a single parent in a single parent household, if you are a man or a woman that grew up with a single mother, you know, this is what I want to give you. Chances are you didn't learn a lot of stuff that seemed like it worked, but it's not biblical. And it's why you stumble. It's why you stumble today. So in saying this, this is one of the best. This, this, I'm going to give you a jewel. I'm going to drop a jewel on you. My sister's out here. You need to know the difference between mothering and nurturing. Because if you try to mother a man, your relationship goals don't mean jack, diddly squat. It ain't going to happen. Men don't want to be mothered, but you need to have that nurturing spirit in a relationship. Say that one more time. You might have to come back and revisit this. Sisters need to know the difference between mothering, which is for parenting, raising children as women and nurturing. Mothering includes nurturing. But when you try to give a man mothering, I'm here to tell you, I only got one mama. And when the scriptures talk about a man serving the most high, Yah might have to doggone choose his, you know, choose a relationship with the most high Yah over his family in order to be obedient. I only got one mama. I only got one mama. A man does not need another mama. So when we think about first Timothy chapter two, verse 12, it's very important that you understand that first Peter chapter three, verse four. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. So I'm pretty much just giving you this scripture right here. But nowadays, what do we have? We got a lot of men and women that want to be beautiful on the outside, but the hearts is wicked. That's going to get you into some trouble, man. You can cover up yourself in a manner and, and, and be a chameleon and transform yourself into whatever you want. But when you get behind closed doors in that union of marriage, the real you, the issue of your heart that's unresolved is going to come out. A new look ain't going to solve that. So it's saying for sisters out here, you're adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. Job chapter 32, 8 through 10. We're getting into the spirit of a man because you can't be out here being an Ahab type man and thinking that your family, thinking that your marriage is going to prosper because you don't have a backbone. If you suck in leadership, if you lack leadership skills, marriage is going to be hard for you. You're going to be easily ran over. Your wife is not going to respect you because you're not falling in line with what Bible says. Women out here, hey, hey, check it out. 
a man that you can walk over, you generally don't respect. So it might seem fun and all of that, but you want somebody that's built solid. And when I say built solid, when things get a little, little hairy, that joke is built for it. And he's like, hey, we're going to get through this. Come on, let me pray with you. Come on, let's pray together. This is where we need faith. You want, you want somebody built for this. You don't want nobody cursing you out in the moment because they don't, they don't have leadership skills. So this is the spirit of a man. Job chapter 32, verses 8 through 10. But it, is a, but it is the spirit in man, the breath of the almighty that makes him understand. So as a man, if you don't have the Ruach Kashadesh, the Holy Spirit, to give you the leadership skills that you need, I don't care what you do for a living. You can be a CEO. You can be this in the military. You can be a doggone whatever you want to be as a man and excel at it. But the most high Yah is going to give you this leadership wisdom that you need as a man for you to have understanding. Because here's the thing. Just because you excel in the workplace don't mean you're going to excel in marriage as a man. You may lead. I'm going to tell you something. You may uh, lead a whole bunch of people and fumble in marriage because you don't have that backbone as a man spiritually that you need to have. It is not the old who are wise nor the age who understand what is right. Therefore, I say, listen to me. Let me also declare my opinion. This is the inspired word of God. And he's telling you where your wisdom need to come from. You can listen to all these, you know, people out here that's relationship coaches and dating coaches and all of this. They ain't giving you Bible. You didn't bought all these books, got all these books on your nightstands. And where did it get you? Where did it get you? Uh-oh, uh-oh. I told you we're going in. Proverbs chapter two, Proverbs chapter 21, verse nine. This is where it's very important for men to realize that you need patience because what the most high Yah is telling us next. This is where a lot of people, they wash their hands in a, in a, in a, in a marriage and they say, I want to go file for divorce because your wife might be trying to give you something. If she's God fearing, that can ultimately save your soul. If you honor her or she might just be giving you a piece of her mind that could be casting a curse on herself and you. That's why you need to go back and read numbers and numbers 30, because numbers 30 talks about a father who has a daughter who says something that's in vain and could be casting down a curse. And a father is the only one that can come back and veto that and say, in Jesus name, she didn't mean that. And it also talks about a wife that says harsh things that could be placing a curse upon herself and the family. The husband is the only one that can veto that and say in the name of Jesus, she didn't really mean that. And it talks about in the end of Numbers 30, if you don't have a spine as a husband and you sit up and be like, man, I ain't even going to say nothing. I'm going to just sit up here and be old Ahab brother. You get the punishment of what she said. You get all the smoke for that. Okay. Proverbs chapter 21, verse nine. It is better to live in a corner of a housetop than a house shared with the quarrelsome wife. Arguments is going to happen. And the most high y'all is telling you it's better for you to get on a roof. And this is that stuff where you might have to go to another room. Let, let, let that stuff simmer down. Because if you do not, if you do not remove yourself, just give a little bit of space in there. As a man, you're going to end up saying some things and you're going to realize that your words cut a little bit differently, even though y'all might call each other some of the same stuff. Hey, your words cut a little bit deeper as a man and you're going to end up having to apologize, asking the most high y'all for forgiveness and asking forgiveness from your wife because you didn't say some stuff that you didn't have no business saying. This is where patience comes in. This is where patience comes in. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 19. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. This is where the modern man lacks discernment, lacks discernment. You will get with the woman who tries to rule over you, wants you to worship her, and then, you know, always wants to argue with you. Brothers, I'm here to tell you, you need to avoid such woman. It is better to live in a desert land. Desert land ain't nothing good. And it's telling you that even that is better than living with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. This is why I had to give you guys this disclaimer at the beginning of this message, because chances are 
Yeah, I told you it was something here, you know, you know. Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. Now we're getting into divorce because, man, let me tell you something. I wish somebody would have given me this. Somebody could have sat me down and said, hey, you know, let me, let me, let me more than telling you you need college, more than telling you you need to be ready for the workforce and all of this stuff and have all this success in other areas. This right here, somebody could have gave me this and took some time. Man, what th think about the success that you could have had if you could have left home at 18 or possibly learned this stuff growing up in the household righteously. Matthew chapter 19, verse 9. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This Western society likes to say cheating. They like to say entanglement. They like to say sneakily. They like to say a uh, side piece, you know, mistress, all this stuff. But biblically, all oh, that stuff don't matter. The most high y'all defines it by sexual immorality, fornication, and adultery. I'm going I'm to I'm throw you left right here. Adultery is defined by the status of the woman, the marital status of the woman. And if you like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, this ain't fair. Why do you think Father Abraham, who was a patriarch in the Bible, we often sung that song, Father Abraham had many sons. He also had many wives and the Most High Yah did not rebuke him once or say that having multiple wives was a sin. Solomon had multiple wives and got corrected because he was led astray. He let women lead him astray. He became an Ahab type spirit. Adultery is defined by the marital status of a woman. And that's Bible right there. Let's keep going. Sexual immorality. This is where we need to, because here's the thing, that piece of paper that you got from the courthouse don't mean Jack Diddley squat. Jack Diddley squat if the most high you in your, in your in your relationship, in your marriage, because sexual immorality pretty much includes or means willful participation in adultery fornication, homosexual and lesbian behavior, incest, or any other unholy, unnatural, or impure sexual activity. So you can say, ah, oh, well, you know, I'm getting divorced because I'm unhappy. Okay, all right, all right. And here's the thing. Most people don't repent for getting divorced outside of the constraints of what the Most High Yah has outlined. This is the reason why you're at the back of the line as a woman when it comes to getting selected by a man again. When you repent and realize where you went wrong as a man or a woman, this when you can win. This when you can win. Accountability is key. You can say I was unhappy as a man or a woman. You know, she didn't do what I wanted as a man or a woman. You know, she withheld rights. He withheld conjugal rights. So we get a divorce. He didn't make enough money. You know, she didn't do what I wanted. If you didn't follow this right here, don't think you about to jump back in line and make something happen again and somebody's just be head over heels for you as a woman and you, you went against this. Think about them divorce statistics that I gave you. And I'm here to tell you, men and women have some work to do. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 3. <sighs> I told you, somebody ain't gonna like this right here. Somebody ain't gonna like this. It's okay, it's okay. Because in order to... I remember, man, before I got delivered, I spent a lot of time getting offended. And it wasn't because somebody was trying to intentionally offend me. It was just uh, my spirit wasn't ready to be healed. My spirit wasn't ready to be delivered. So I got up and walked out a lot of times. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse three, the husband should give his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. Woo, woo, woo. Man, let me tell you something. If you get into a relationship, think that you're going to manipulate somebody and withholding conjugal rights. Woo, how did that work out for you? Let me ask you that. Let me look good in the camera. How did that work out for you? How did that work out for you? The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. Let me tell you something. God gave man some sexual parts. He also gave woman some sexual parts. Don't be out here trying to manipulate somebody for what you want, your will, using your sexual parts. You're going to be lonely. You're going to be lonely. And you're going to get sniffed out. 
So, men, hey, I don't care if you didn't came home from a long day's worth of work, your back hurt, you better be ready to, you better be ready to lay it down, lay it down. Women, same thing. Hey, don't nobody, the most high y'all, he's telling you right here, you can be gassy, you can be bloated, you, I got a headache, hey, you better be ready. You better be ready. Find the motivation. Find the motivation as men and women to not do this right here. When you like, man, I'm tired. Man, I don't want to wake up. Man, I just want to go to sleep. Man, the kids got me up. You need to pray for strength. Pray for strength from the most high, y'all, to fulfill your duty as a husband or as a, as a wife by giving conjugal rights. When you do that, this is, here's the thing. Here's the reality. Sisters ain't going to like this. A lot of women hold conjugal rights from their husband, but then you think that this man is not finna go out and find some. Now you mad because he didn't went out and did that. But remember what I told you. Adultery is dependent or defined on the status of the woman, the marital status. You didn't got mad at your man or your husband for going out getting conjugal rights from an unmarried woman and here you are not giving conjugal rights. How, do, how, how does that balance out? But you're going to say, it's my body. I can do what I want with it. Now you're out here single. Now you're out here divorced. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the meat and the potatoes to help you out this year. Because chances are people have been struggling in these areas. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. A wife is bound to her husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is free to be married to whom she wishes. Only in the Lord. Only in the Lord. You got some men that's not in the Lord. So these men out here, you might be like, man, my husband, he, he, he's, he's, my husband is trying to lead me. I don't want to be led. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But is he fulfilling what the Most High Yah told him to do? And here's the thing. Men and women, ain't none of us ever going to be perfect. Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, was the only one that was ever that ever graced this earth and was perfect. So ain't none of us going to be perfect. But here's the thing. When something in your heart is not right as a man or a woman, you start nitpicking the small things and try to make a major. So it's saying, you know, you bound to your husband as long as he lives. But if her husband dies, she is free to marry whom she wishes only in the Lord. I got to take you back to the beginning of the Bible where you had the nation of Israel that was intermingling with all these other nations. And now we got all these plagues because of it. You want to marry in the Lord. You what, what does it look like that you have a man of the Most High Yah who's trying to be what the Most High Yah has outlined a husband to be? You, because you reject the truth, don't want to be obedient, you go out here and remarry to a man that ain't don't have a God-fearing bone in his body. There's a judgment for that, okay? Men, same thing. Hey, you doggone divorce your wife for other than sexual immorality, there's a judgment for that. And it's a simple judgment once you realize and be accountable for that and repent for it. You can... You can Get past that. You can move on Pat, from, you know, from that, but you have to repent. Oftentimes people don't want to repent for it. They'd be like, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't get what I needed and, and she didn't do what I wanted. No, no, no. It, it, this had to happen. Okay. All right. Keep going with that. Let's keep going. Genesis chapter two, verse 18. We in the beginning of the book. Then the Lord said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for them. I want to ask. You know, we live in this generation right now where uh, the modern man is, is, is lazy. The modern man is lazy. I got to say that. And there ain't no work ethic there. So, you know, you got the modern man trying to fulfill the role of a housewife. And it wasn't ever, it wasn't ever designed. It wasn't the will of the Most High Yah. The, the, the book clearly says that. So when you think about the Lord, God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a helper fit for them. Man, I'm here to tell you that if you worship, you know, and love the Beyonce and you have been programming 
yourself to that as a woman, you're doing yourself an injustice because it contradicts what the word of God says. Like a lot of these people that you might follow said, a lot of these, these celebrity sisters out here don't have a God fearing bone in their body and they want a man to worship them. Husbands should honor their wives, but ultimately they should love their wives as scripture says. But when you want a man to worship you, you end up with a man that you don't respect. So when you think about this scripture, you have to be willing to help a man. And in exchange for that, you get some great protection. This is, this is where, this is where, and nowhere in scripture, you ain't going to find that word equality. In order to have that great protection, you need to help this man. Don't help him as a mother, help him as a wife. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. This is scripture right here. An excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. We got a lot of men and women running down to that course house, getting that piece of paper, doing all of this stuff that's not biblical. And then the judge says, by the powers vested in the state of California, by the powers vested in the state of, of New York City. And you wonder why two years from now, they, they doggone uh, going at each other's throats. Most high y'all would never in that. He didn't have no, 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 no power in that. You didn't never ask him to, Hey, make sure this, this, this man is right for me. Make sure this woman is right for me. You didn't pray on that and you don't going to get yourself into some trouble. She is far more precious than jewels. Now, if you ask the common man, are they the, 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 are they the cream of the crop? You ask the average woman, are they the cream of the crop? Everybody gonna be like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm it. I'm the man. I'm, the, I'm, the, you know, I'm the boss. Bi, whatever you know, you want to say. But this is where your discernment kicks in. Okay, Proverbs chapter twelve, verse four. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like a rottenness to his bones. Man, if you are a man or a woman and you don't exercise faith on a daily basis, you are gonna be in trouble. You are gonna end up doing some stuff as a sister, as a wife, and you're going to bring shame and rottenness, and then you're going to have to live with the reality of it that you didn't shot yourself in the foot. Shot yourself in the foot. And now you ain't got nobody to deal with you. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 through 15. To the married, I give this charge. The wife should not separate from her husband. But if she does, she should remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband and the husband should not divorce his wife. Man, if your first solution when you are faced with problems in a marriage is divorce, you don't need to get no relationship. I don't care what year it is. If that is your first solution, when you are faced with a problem in a relationship or a marriage, you don't need to enter into no relationship. You don't even need to waste nobody time because divorce ain't a solution. Divorce oftentimes is one of the most selfish things that you can do if it goes against what the Most High Yah outlines as parameters for divorce, which is sexual immorality. People don't even realize that when you divorce, it's selfish and you say, you know what? You know, it wasn't sexual immorality. It was my own happiness. It was my independence. It was th it was my money. That's selfish. And, and if you have kids in the mix of this, if you got kids in the mix of this, now you got your kids jumping from house to house and you think that's what they really wanted. No, them kids wanted their mom and daddy in the same household the way the book says. Verse 12, to the rest I say that if any brother has a wife who is an unbeliever and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. So all of my men out here who catch the Holy Ghost, who become born again, but when you got married, you what you both was living in sin. When you get that Holy Spirit in you, that don't mean just because out of you realize that now you got the discernment, my wife is the devil. She's an unbeliever. If she want to stay with you, you better doggone deal with her and have that patience. You chose her, you deal with her. If any woman has a husband who is, in, who is an unbeliever and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. You have a lot of sisters out here that, that find a church home 
and these 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 doggone soft spirited pastors, religious leaders would tell you, yeah, leave him, leave him because they don't want you under no authority. They gonna tell you the dog gonna leave him. Your mama might tell you to leave him. Girl, leave him. But if he wanna stay with you and he's an unbeliever, just because you didn't caught the Holy Ghost, just because you didn't doggone got saved, baptized in the name of Yahshua Hamashiach, you better stay in that doggone fight because I, I, I did a video on this before. The sanctified husband can sanctify the wife. The sanctified wife can sanctify the husband. But chances are you may not be built like that in 2023. Let's keep going. For the unbelieving husband is made holy because of his wife. And the unbelieving wife is made holy because of the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, they are holy. But if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such cases, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you to be at peace. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, if somebody just leave and don't want to be with you, because you're an unbeliever walking in the ways of the Most High Yah as a woman or as a man, and they just choose to leave, hey, let them go. Because they wasn't for you. They wasn't for you. And if you keep being obedient, the Most High Yah is going to send you somebody that you need. 1 Peter chapter 4 through 8. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Man, the Most High Yah gave his son to be crucified on that cross for our sins. There ain't no greater love that you can feel like you gave as a man or a woman if it don't compare to that. Today, I'm here to tell you that if you quickly say, I love you and I love you this to men and women, but you really don't mean it. You might want to check yourself for you wreck yourself when it comes to these relationship goals of 2023, because this is serious business. Everybody that says they want a husband, everybody that says they want a wife is not fit for it. It's not fit for it because this is some serious work that has to be done. You got to be built for it. If submission is a curse word to you as a woman or as a man, there ain't no way in hell that you can be obedient to God because men and women are required to submit to the most high Yah. There's a biblical order, but chances are you might have struggled with the order of things. Chances are you might try to be in a relationship using your own will instead of the will of the most high Yah. Men. You know, I, I, I highly encourage you to read Numbers 30. And if you read it in the King James Version and it, and it reads a little bit hard or you're unstudied and you can't discern what it means, read it in the ESV. Read it in the English Standard Version. Because this right here is talking about the responsibility of a father and a husband over a daughter and a wife. Because if you don't fulfill what is your responsibilities, you catch the judgment and the punishment for what the daughter or the wife said. Sisters out here, you know, everybody talks about Proverbs 31. And a lot of these religious entertainers and motivators, they don't even teach on that because they don't want to offend nobody, even though it's the truth of the Most High Yah. But I highly encourage you go back and read Proverbs 5 because Proverbs 5 is the complete opposite of Proverbs 31. Men out here, you need to you need to know who Ahab was because you don't want to be out here trying to be in a relationship and being an Ahab. Ahab was married to Jezebel. Jezebel wasn't spoken of highly in the Bible. So you don't want to be that 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 brother out here who considers yourself a man of the most high Yah, but you have the spirit of Ahab. You have the backbone of Ahab because your relationship is going to struggle. You are consistently going to get get doggone walked over, get manipulated. Man, I, I, it, it sucks, man. You know, seeing some of the stuff that I often see on social media from married people, from single people, and it, and it honestly, you know, when I think about these Sabbath day teachings and pray on them, what, what is something that the people need? What is a message that you want, you know, the people to hear? Oftentimes, man, I can, I could, you know, I could easily cop out and, 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 and sell out and give you what Joel Osteen does, give you that kind of ear tickling message. But I know this message that I give you 
everybody is not built for it. This is why I said in the beginning, if you don't have that Ruach Kashadesh, that Holy Spirit, you're not going to be able to receive what I'm saying. Chances are you're going to be offended oftentimes before you get delivered. And being offended sometimes is what convicts you enough to say, man, I need help because people around me are getting this. You know, my, my, my brother is getting this. My sister is getting this. But I'm the only one that seems to be struggling with this. That lets you know you got some issues in your heart as a man or a woman that only the most high y'all can, you know, can fix. Man, a lot of people like to result to these relationship uh, books and things like that. But these books, these are not men and women of the most high y'all oftentimes. You know, they taking credit for the stuff that they that, that they're saying and trying to do it instead of giving you the will of the most high Yah. And I don't want none of the glory for this because it's all the doggone will of the father. It's all the will of the father. You know, a lot of sisters got hoodwinked, bamboozled, scammed and robbed by Brother Derek Jackson, who was telling sisters everything that they wanted to hear. But wasn't none of that stuff biblical. So what happens? Now you didn't realize this brother wasn't really about that life. Now what do you do with this book? Do you keep on reading it? I'm here to tell you that there is no other message, no other word that will ever be greater than the will of the Most High Yah if you are a child of God. Don't even look nowhere else for it because your answers are here. If you're not a child of God, you go everywhere else and look for it. Don't, don't come here. Don't take this. This ain't for you. This is not for you because that spirit of obedience is not in you. Man, today... I told you that today's message was going to break down religious denominational barriers, you know, and I hope I said something to stimulate thought so you could exercise self-autonomy, independent thinking and get outside the box. Oftentimes, you know, people struggle in relationships because you take advice from somebody who ain't never prospered in it. You know, if you got a mom or a daddy who you got a daddy who's for the streets. If you got a mama that's for the streets and you taking relationship advice from them, hey, you, whoo, 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 uh-oh, you're going to be in some trouble. you going to be in some trouble. If your, if your daddy couldn't commit himself um, in marriage, if your mama couldn't commit herself to a man in marriage, biblical marriage, what are you doing? What are you doing? And here's the hard pill. Oftentimes, we, we don't want to swallow that hard truth of Bible. And that's why we that's why we consistently fall, man. I see all these New Year's resolutions and they're going to die off. They're going to die off. But I truly wanted to give, you know, the people something to help them out. And it's OK if you don't agree with it today, because the, the, the scriptures say each man must be convinced in his own mind. So I don't expect you to just to agree with everything. That's why I gave you the disclaimer that if you don't have the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Hashanah, the Holy Ghost, the spirit of obedience, the spirit of learning wisdom. It's okay. You're going to reject it. I know that because I've once been there. It's okay. But I guarantee you this. I will leave this video up. It will be public. You can come back and visit it. It'll be here for you. I'm not just going to put this up and delete it. So today you might be offended, but five years from now, you might be delivered. That's the ultimate goal. That's the ultimate goal because I want people out there that in their mind can easily come up and say, man, I want a relationship. I want a family. I want a husband. I want a wife. I'm trying to get you to the point where you can't not only have it in your mind, but you need to have it in your heart because your heart and the spirit in your heart is what's going to make you obedient. Your mind and your, your flesh is not going to keep you in the Lord. It's not going to keep you in the spirit. Your flesh is going to keep you out of the spirit. And that's why you need this Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kashadez, to govern you on a daily basis, especially in a marriage, especially in a relationship. Shabbat Shalom. Go in peace. Go in love. Share this message. Closer to God Ministries, kicking it gun barrel straight.